One week after a marathon meeting with heads of Nigeria's security agencies, the House of Representatives is lamenting rising insecurity in several parts of the country, especially Kaduna, Benue, Taraba, and Plateau states. The lawmakers called for a state of emergency on security, as well as sacking or resignation of the National Security Advisor, retired Major General Babagana Munguno, and Minister of Defense Bashir Magashi. Meanwhile, gunmen killed 31 persons in Ebony and Anambra states within the last 72 hours. 31 persons, the last 72 hours. Let's share the story with you. Almighty God, creator and ruler of heaven and earth. Motions on insecurity from virtually every part of the country have become regular on legislative days here. On this day, two motions detailed the indiscriminate killings, rape, kidnapping, and destruction of property in Plateau and Benue states. Nigerians are being killed on daily basis, Mr. Speaker. The four angles of Nigeria, nowhere is safe. Mr. Speaker, what is beating my imagination more, aside of the killing, is who is responsible, not in terms of the people that are committing those atrocities. Nigerian governments have come out in different occasions to say they know them. The matter has created fears among our constituents and it poses grave danger in many ways, which could include negative reactions from our constituents. It is a display of emotion, anger and frustration as members contribute to the two motions. They accuse some of the security agents of aiding and abating bandits and renew calls for the sack of the National Security Advisor and the Minister of Defense. It is so sad that uh, we have come to a situation in this country where evil is perpetrated and no one is held accountable. There are cases where we, we understand that information were passed to the security uh, personnel and still these terrorists overcome the ordinary Nigerian people. This is a failed state. The executive headed by Mr. President must know that Benue, our lives matter. We come here and we cry. And today again, Benue is bleeding. I don't know what argument anybody can give to insulate the security agencies in terms of doing their duty to ensure that this thing does not happen. The House seeks relief materials for displaced persons and urges the presence of Joint Security Tax Force in affected areas. As part of solutions to the increasing wave of insecurity in the country, the legislators urged President Muhammadu Buhari to immediately invoke Section 83, Subsection 1 of the Constitution for the release of contingency fund to enable the country that the services of mercenaries TVC News, Abuja. Ujire, where we are working in this organization, there's something they call KPI that they use in assessing you, whatever position you occupy. President Muhammad Ubuari and his ministers, some people are now calling for the resignation of the National Security Advisor, that's um, Major General Babagana Mugunu, and the Minister of Defense, Bashir Magashi. And you want to talk about impact. These guys are really, they're not, they've not been visible, and if they've been visible, we've not seen impact. No, um, we, it's, just, it's just terrible. We, we can't see progress being made in the area of security. And the NSA has to be the one leading the way, coordinating the armed forces and ensuring that the strategy, the strategy is not only an effective one, but that all of the service chiefs and other and, and the uh, inspector general of police key into that strategy. Oh. It's supposed to be at the top, yeah. coordinating yeah. that security yeah. strategy. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I don't see that. I don't even see evidence of him coordinating these guys. Is either they do not Rabo. respect him, is either they do not respect him, and I won't be surprised because he has complained in the past that service chiefs were not taking instructions from him. Oh. He complained 
not this current uh, service no, we, before we, now. We had, um, I don't know whether we are still experiencing yeah, yeah. that. But the NSA has to be seen to be bringing down the level of insecurity in our country. If we cannot get our NSA to do much better mm. than is doing currently, then something is wrong. Mm. I, I, I listened to the Minister of Defense saying that, oh, they have evidence that Boko Haram and the bandits um, work together in the Northwest and North Central. Is this, is that new? Oh. Have we not been Something talking about that here? Oh. oh, so does it now mean now that, okay, our years and months of denial have ended, that we have now oh. accepted that indeed so these guys have spread their tentacles beyond where we used to know them. Those who sat on social media lying that uh, the, 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 this the Boko Haram has not been able to spread beyond the northeast. They should be ashamed of themselves now because we now have our, our the people who run our security admitting that mm. these guys are now working together. Mm. Shekau plotted the kidnap mm. of the government uh, science secondary school, Kankara boys. Mm. But we deny, that's why he was the one who uh, posted the video and owned up. We lied. We said, no, no, Sheka was not involved. Today, we are admitting that Boko Haram and other terrorists are working with bandits. Mm -hmm. If it takes us so long to, realize. to even know that this is the extent of the problem, or this is how these guys are working together, how are we going to address the problem? How are we going to solve the problem? All right. We'll take this break. When we come back, we'll talk more. Please keep your doubt locked. We'll be right back. Thank you for staying with us. We're still looking at the split of insecurity across um, the country. And then um, when you now go to the National Security Advisor from into the Minister of Defense, you know, the last time I heard about the Minister of Defense was when he asked people to defend themselves. Mm. Ayo, the fact of the matter is that our country is under siege, serious siege, except we want to pretend. The crisis is one that has uh, taken us to almost a near, you know, uh, level of a failed state. Hmm. You know, you, you talked about 31 persons killed in the southeast in 72 hours. It doesn't tell the entire picture. A very recent record says that about 2,900 something persons were killed in the first quarter of this year. Three months, mm. are you? Mm. And we are saying we are not in a worse situation. Mm. Over 1,400 were kidnapped. Mm. And then we have a Minister of Defense, we have a National Security Advisor. But again, we must not pretend that the bug doesn't stop on the President's table. But we have a situation on our hands where our President just allows his appointees to go about yeah. their responsibilities the way they like. I can't remember in recent memory of the president, you know, just asking people to explain their rules or asking them to move apart from, you know, and that came after a lot of pressure, the removal of the former service chiefs and, and the rest of them. Yeah. is not too keen. People just, you know, move on and do whatever they want to do. We have a very serious problem on our hands. We're under siege. And people must learn to take responsibility. The most that we can do at this level is to hold government accountable. But beyond all this, Ayo, I think that we have failed to prioritize the issue of security in this country. If, if we have it prioritized, it won't be the kind of state that we are in. We, it, we, we, we reduce it to a matter of just talk. And we think that the challenge will go away. It's not going away. It's getting it's worse. Hurting us badly. From the northwest to the northeast to the southwest to north central. Now in the southeast, we are talking about 30, over 30 killed in 72 hours. It never, it never used to be so. Yeah. So this, the hard reality is it's, it's you know, staring, staring us in the face. 
And the president must wake up to his responsibilities. It's not enough to just appoint people and keep them there. The buck mm. stops on his table. Yeah. Talking about appointing, appointing people and keeping them on the job, and um, some people, beyond asking Mr. President to resign, they've asked these ministers to resign. And um, I don't it's know what. Chiefs. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, um, in Nigeria, people don't resign. Mm. Even when it is apparent that they have failed, they don't resign. They don't, don't, they, they don't resign. They don't see anything <laughs> wrong in, in uh, failing in office and remaining there. Yes, yes, yes. They don't see I, 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 it, it has become, office. yes. And, no, they, and we feel to qualify for that uh, one. He's even saying too. that he's he he going to. Thought, thought he's meanwhile, done. his mate in Algeria, that one there. resigned, though. Oh. <laughs> his mate in Algeria, a country oh. that beat Nigeria uh, recently, oh. that one resigned, though. You let your country down. Oh. You are boasting, making it look like it is impossible for us not to qualify for the World Cup oh. when we eventually fail to qualify oh. and uh, fritter the goodwill oh. that Nigerians showered on the team. You are not thinking of going. It's a typical Nigerian. Mm -hmm. It's a typical Nigerian. So I won't be going for third time again. Now after talking to my family <laughs> and everything, I'm under pressure. I won't go. <laughs> what said. Leave that. He, he was contemplating. Leave he, that. He was man. contemplating going for third time. <laughs> we have more problems uh, confronting us than, 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 than football. Than wasting our time <laughs> talking about Pinnick here. If you want to give yourself a good laugh, mm. just play the video of Pinnick talking about. Uh, when someone asks him a hypothetical question that what if we don't qualify? Yeah, I remember and that video. He flew into a rant, mm. just talking at the end of the day. We did not qualify. We didn't qualify. We tell him between legs, he still wants to continue. <laughs> it's the same nature that mm. our people have. Mm. What happened in uh, Sri Lanka? When that terrorist uh, action took place, mm. resignation quickly, because you you have a feeling that people. you have failed your people. They don't tell them, they don't waste time about it. Mm. In our country, a manifest failure, mm. somebody whose failure is as apparent as daylight, will mm. still imagine that no, 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 it's the president who put me there. If the president doesn't tell me to go, I will not go. There is no honor. That's what why we are facing. Then the president on his part doesn't even appear to challenge these people enough. Because I'm interested in seeing the KPI of service chiefs, the KPI of the NSA. What does the KPI look like? Because if you are you know that you are constantly being evaluated, you will you will do a lot better than these guys are doing. And it's the same thing with ministers. Mm. A good number of them are not they are not doing well, but they are keeping those positions. You don't even hear their names. They are keeping their You've positions. That they are ministers. So don't even hear them. Niger when Nigerians tell them to resign, when the National Assembly also tells them to resign, they know in their hearts that they won't resign. You are just you are just wasting your breath. These people will not resign. Mm. I wish we had a law by which the National Assembly on this part could even fire them, sack them, if the president would not take that action. Maybe that way a lot of them, we can see the back of oh. some of them. But all, all they can do is tell us to confront robbers with uh, mm. uh, bear hands. With, uh, with, with bear hands. hands. Mm. Mm. We have Roy from Abaka Likidat, Ebony States. Thank you for joining us, Roy. Hello? Hello, Roy, can you hear me? So, it's like, it's, it's a strange culture. It is, it is really, and um, I had, it's, it's even much more disturbing, you know, when you get to hear Mr. President, you know, after each uh, attack by bandits and killings all over the place, and he says, Mr. President has ordered the security chiefs to act in a like manner. 
and you wonder if they never had any job description. <laughs> you know, <laughs> we've been talking about KPIs and all that. Does, does, do the service chiefs need to be told to execute their responsibilities? And so you, you just wonder if those things are not mere talks all over the place. Because it, it's, it serves no purpose, it makes no, it makes no meaning to me. Mm. When you have crisis of this nature, and all we get from the presidency is a, is a written text saying that Mr. President has ordered them to do this, mm -hmm. as, if, as if they never had mm -hmm. any job description in mm -hmm. the first place. Mm -hmm. So it is, is a culture yeah, that we need the marching order. Yes, we, we need to rework this entire, uh, entire thing. You know, there has to be honor. There has to be honor. If you know you have failed, honorably step aside. In fact, you, you are likely to earn more respect doing that. I don't think we should even wait for them it's, to step aside. Oh. If people we should are find failed, a way to, we should to have a culture of showing them, them the door. Immediately. Send but, them packing. That but, shame will make the person coming in tell you himself that, look, yes, whatever I, it is, I must give my best. Yes. I yeah. must deliver. Yes. Otherwise, the treatment that they gave uh, Mr. Yozubaku the other day mm. is what they will give me. Mm. But if we don't do that, we are waiting mm. for them to resign. They will not mm. resign. Mm. Yakub is calling us from Lagos. Yeah, uh, I, uh, good evening. And then, uh, Baba Dede told you good evening, sir. And then the other gentleman in the studio. Sam is good. Uh, 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 it is true that uh, these people will never resign. And then it is so, it is also unfortunate that uh, we have it that does not like to tax people. I want every, anybody to challenge me. A so single minister that we sacked in seven years to this time. None. No, we sacked. Two. Same job to do, and Two. then they didn't do it where it would never have uh, them. And then, but Mr. Abbas, I want to ah. ask you a, a, a one question, sir. Please, do we have any disadvantage by inciting the, the people that can fight on our behalf? I'm talking about uh, machinery now. If our disadvantage is so low, take this. What do we do if we are in a position of advantage of winning this water and fighting machinery? Why can't we do it? Because people have been killing every day with the same thing, the same way. And then we expect another result. I don't think we can get it. Please, what Thank is you. this advantage of being in fighting these people? Thank you. Julie, we wanted to go there. We wanted to go there finally. And uh, this issue of machinery, do we need mm. machineries to fight for us? I, I don't even think we should be calling them mercenaries. In, in, um, in the modern world, they are called military contractors. Okay. America used a good number of them in Iraq. Hmm. Military contractors, more military contractors died than American soldiers. Hmm. Because, look, they deployed them to, de to secure some very dangerous areas. The Green Zone, for example, in Iraq, where the, all the big um, U.S. troops, uh, big uh, generals and other people, even the people running the Iraqi government at that time, we had the, we had the, the part of the, the country's capital where they were. These guys were the ones protecting those areas against um, terrorist attacks and all that. So they paid with their lives. Small military contractors mm. that we are calling uh, mercenaries, more of them died than U.S. troops. Mm. If we check it, that is the truth. So there is no, no big deal about it. It is now the current trend. If the most powerful army in the world, the U.S., can use military contractors, Nigeria is not too big to use them, and we have used them before. We sure. used them before, and they delivered success, you know? But some people came and said, oh, how are the mighty falling? Why should Nigeria bring in uh, um, people to come and fight on Nabia? Okay, we are uh, fighting by we ourselves, fighting, no? and we are here to win the war. Some people quarreled that we brought in uh, uh, troops from Chad, but we are not the only country to use Chad. Even in Mali, the Chadians went. Yeah. So now we are, we, we, we are in trouble. People are calling for this. I know the governor of Bono called for this. The governor of, uh, um, what was it called? Uh, Kaduna? Kaduna State also called for it the other day. Now the National Assembly has called for it. What it means yeah. is 
more and more people are losing confidence that under the present security structure that we can win the war against these bandits. Um, I, I talk less about the Northeast now because we are delivering success in the Northeast. It's a fact that you hardly hear of terrorist attack in the Northeast anymore because we are dealing decisively with them over there. Yeah. But now in the Northwest, we'll that's where bandits. we should focus on. Oh. That's what we should focus on.